Hi and welcome. It's Jessica Drummond here from the Integrative Women's Health Institute. Today we're going to be talking about the simple three-step approach to natural hormone balance. Let's jump right in. So first we're going to talk about who needs hormone balance. Then we're going to talk about what those three steps are. And then I want to share with you a case study from a woman who is here to inspire you to take steps to achieve balance in your life. And I'm going to share a few snippets from some other women as well. So the truth is that women of all ages struggle with hormonal imbalance. This is not an issue just related to perimenopause or menopause. It's not always in just an issue of fertility struggles. You know, girls as young as young teenagers, especially if they're quite athletic, can have challenges with menstrual irregularities. Things like endometriosis can present in the teen years and sometimes goes undetected for even a decade before it's properly dealt with or longer. Women after menopause can struggle with hormone-related issues that can cause abdominal weight gain, depression, fatigue, memory issues. So this is really an issue throughout life. You know, everything from vaginal dryness that affects uh, a woman's sexual function, libido challenges, recovery from pregnancy in the postpartum period. So we really have to consider how our hormones are in balance right from puberty all the way through and beyond menopause because, uh, you know, hormonal health goes well beyond reproductive health. There are over 300 sites of estrogen receptors in your body as just an example. So hormonal health is not just about reproductive health. It's not just about sexual health. It's about bone health. It's about brain health. It's about immune health. And, and all of those other things as well. You know, uh, it's even about your, it, we, we don't always think of the thyroid and the stress hormones as hormones, but those are very integrally related to our sex and reproductive hormones as well. So here's a little bit of the bad rap that hormones uh, always get, you know, it's, it's always this comical description of a crazy woman, her hormones being out of balance and she ends up just losing it. And, you know, certainly I have felt that way from time to time. And there are very, um, intense effects that can come from hormonal imbalances, significant depression, anxiety, a feeling of kind of loss of control of our, you know, of our emotions, difficulty sleeping, insomnia. And when we're struggling with all these things, we can feel like a crazy person who's going to do something that will end up on the news. So let's have some fun. At the end of this webinar, I have a special invitation for you. So please stay tuned until the end. And I suggest that you close all other windows, silence your cell phone notifications, and find a quiet place so that you can focus on what we're going to discuss today. I'm as guilty as anyone else of having 10 windows open at a time, but it's important that we pay attention to the information to get the most out of it. So let me introduce myself a bit if you don't know me already. I started my career as a physical therapist, actually in orthopedics and sports medicine, and pretty quickly specialized in women's health. That was, gosh, nearly 20 years ago now. And then after I had my first daughter, Claire, in 2003, I, I kind of was on a slow decline from being an overachieving, athletic, you know, climbing the ladder uh, professionally kind of woman. I had, you know, straight A student and all that kind of stuff. And then I had a baby and I had a great healthy pregnancy, easy, you know, no fertility issues with my first daughter. But right after her birth, I really crashed. And it was, you know, it was vague. And my clinicians and my doctors kept saying, oh, well, you just had a baby. It's normal that you're tired. But I experienced quite extreme burnout, fatigue, pain, constant sickness, severe anxiety and panic attacks. Uh, and then I went on to have infertility. So I do have a second daughter. There's a little Kate right there. That's, that's a while ago now. Um, but, it, you know, she was born seven years later because I struggled with infertility 
all that time in between. I was diagnosed with what we used to call adrenal fatigue. It's really better known now, is better described as HPA axis dysregulation because there are lots of kinds of, of issues you can have. And what that simply means is that my stress response system was not working well. And I see this all the time in my practice. And it looks like chronic fatigue. It looks like chronic anxiety. It looks like infertility. It looks like other hormonal imbalances. It can look like thyroid issues, weight gain, skin and hair issues. So it can present in a number of different ways, but really what it's what it means at its core is that your hormone system is out of balance. So I went back to school to become a nutritionist because how I healed myself was by completely changing my lifestyle and using what's known as a functional nutrition approach. I completely changed how I was eating, even though I would have considered myself a healthy eater, you know, turkey sandwiches on whole grain bread. I ate vegetables. I also ate a lot of sugar, a lot of grains, right? But, you know, I would have considered myself a healthy eater at the time. And I wasn't, you know, a fast food junkie or anything like that. Then by the time 2011 hit, I was quite healthy. My younger daughter was born, Kate, and I founded the Integrative Women's Health Institute, which is the institute where we provide now uh, clinical services for women in nutrition who are looking for hormonal balance. We offer these uh, educational programs for women, and we offer educational training for health and wellness professionals all over the world now. We have students in more than 35 different countries across disciplines, you know, physicians, physical therapists, midwives, fitness professionals, health coaches, chiropractors, naturopaths, acupuncturists. It's, we hit the gamut. So who needs hormone balancing? Teens with acne, teens who exercise excessively, teens who have pa painful or irregular periods. And let me give you a quick tip right now that's really important. If you were a teenage girl or you have a teenage girl or you know a teenage girl who is struggling with intense menstrual cramps, that is a huge red flag that we want to have investigated by a physician who is extremely skilled in um, diagnosing endometriosis. Now, it's quite possible that she does not have endometriosis, but endometriosis can present in the teen years, and it's really important for fertility preservation, just in case she wants to have children later, that her endometriosis is properly diagnosed and that the only kind of surgery she has is endometriosis excision surgery that is done by a skilled surgeon. Now that can be if you're older as well. And surgery is optional in the case of endometriosis, but it's important to understand that that is a, um, an option especially, again, if you're strongly interested in uh, maintaining fertility. There are a lot of things we can do from a natural you know, nutrition perspective to um, improve the symptoms of uh, endometriosis and even to some degree improve fertility, but endometriosis excision surgery is an option that anyone who has endometriosis should be aware of, and then everything else that we do can support the best outcomes for endometriosis surgery. So that's a bit of an aside, but it's one of those things that's not well known and about 10% of all teen girls, women in their 20s, 30s, and 40s do have endometriosis and many do not know it. And because it can only be diagnosed properly by laparoscopic surgery, it's important to have assessed. And then the number one symptom to look for is really extremely painful periods. That is not normal. Periods should not be so painful that you are having to miss school or work. Now, there are many things that don't require surgery, pretty much everything else, <laughs> because with general pelvic pain, with um, infertility, preconception issues, women who have been on the birth control pill and are now coming off and having trouble adjusting hormonally, Postpartum women who struggle with fatigue, chronic sicknesses, depression, anxiety, weight issues, hair and skin issues, women in perimenopause or menopause with libido challenges, brain fog, 
um, hot flashes, insomnia, all of these things are hormonally related issues that we can get to the bottom of very often with a holistic nutrition, functional nutrition approach. Women with digestive issues, chronic pain, autoimmune disease, and osteoporosis also very commonly have a hormonal component. So, you know, the thing is, is that our hormones are biochemical messengers that affect a lot of different systems. So if you're struggling with any of these issues or you know someone who is, you are in the right place. Now let's get a little nerdy. I'm only going to have a couple of nerdy sciencey slides here, but I think they're important. Number one, hormone balance starts in the brain. Our stress hormones affect the immune system and feed back to the brain. So your brain doesn't necessarily distinguish between emotional stress, like relationship stress, moving, overwork, um, you know, problems with getting good grades in school for teenagers, divorce later in life. Um, you know, the brain doesn't dis distinguish between that kind of stress and a more physical stress. So someone who might be eating too much sugar or fast food, someone who's not getting enough sleep, someone who's over-exercising or not exercising enough, all of those different stressors can trigger a response by the hormonal stress response system. And that hormonal stress response system that primarily depends on the hormone cortisol, although there are other hormones, influences the immune system, which can provoke the cycle and cause more inflammation in the brain, more depressive symptoms, more anxious symptoms, and then trigger other immune-based illnesses like either getting chronically um, sick all the time, you know, you catch every cold and flu that your kids bring home from preschool, or you're just always kind of feeling sick, or it's more of an autoimmune picture where you may present with autoimmune symptoms like food sensitivities, digestive issues, or hormonal, I mean, uh, thyroid hormone challenges, so low thyroid function, uh, joint pain, things like that. So all of this, all I'm trying to say here with this nerdy, sciencey slide is that the hormonal responses of the stress response system, the reproductive and sex hormones, and the thyroid all begin in the brain, connect to the digestive and immune systems. So we can't look at these things in isolation. We have to take care of the, all of these systems, the digestive system, the immune system, your brain health, and your hormone health to keep your hormones on track for the long term. Now, again, don't freak out. There's not going to be a test on this, but I just want you to see if we look here on this side, this is the stress response system in some really nerdy language. This is the thyroid system in that same scary sciencey language. But here's what all I want you to pay attention to on this slide. Hormones from the stress response system, including cortisol and some of the other intermediate hormones, impact directly. See these little arrows that cross over here? These hormones directly impact thyroid function. You cannot appropriately and completely assess and, and you know, uh, resolve, improve thyroid health without optimizing stress hormone system health. Because if the stress hormone system is out of balance, it's going to lean over here and cause trouble to the thyroid system. So it's not enough to just be, you know, taking a thyroid medication to quote unquote, keep your thyroid in balance. You need to address the stress hormones. Otherwise you're always kind of swimming upstream. Stress hormones also affect digestion. So this I think is our last nerdy sciencey slide. The bottom uh, kind of yellow down there are your intestines and see all those little bugs, the gut microbiota that live in your intestine. Generally speaking, that is a good thing. Those healthy bacteria, what like the probiotics, if you've heard of that and yogurt and sauerkraut help us to make vitamins, to digest food, to support our digestive health. But if we are under a lot of emotional stress, see that brain up there, if we have emotional stress, or physical stress, eating too much sugar, over-exercising, not sleeping enough, then that stress impacts the health of the digestive system. 
all, all you need to know here is that if you have bloating, constipation, brain fog, hair loss, cold intolerance, weight loss challenges, anxiety, depression, or chronic pain, all of this likely has at least something to do with your hormonal health related to your digestive health, all of your hormone systems, your immune health, and your brain health. So what do we do about this? If all of these systems are involved, how can we take care of our bodies and our hormones without it being a full-time job, without you having to go back to medical school, right? Well, the good news is, really, we can support all of these systems, the hormonal system, digestive system, immune system, brain and nervous system, with just three steps, assuming that they are done as a lifestyle shift, as a long-term change. This isn't just, you know, 21 days to your beach body, right? This is getting these biologic, physiologic systems in balance so that you feel good every day, not just the first week of summer when you put your bathing suit on or whatever that that is about. So the three steps are nourish, sleep, and move. And let me explain those in a bit more detail. So nourishment goes way beyond food to actually allowing yourself to bathe in pleasure, in laughter, in beauty, in art, and connection. And it's also about allowing yourself to really enjoy eating, nourishing, colorful, healthy, you know, natural whole foods, food that is really food, food that is not just in boxes and packages and things like that. And the idea of thinking of food as not something to de deprive ourselves of, but something to fill ourselves up with in a way that's going to feed all of those cells and those healthy gut bacteria and all of the, you'll have all the raw ingredients that you need to make hormones. One of the things I see most commonly in my practice is not that women are eating too much, but they're actually not eating enough of you know, healthy sources of fats, high quality sources of, of micronutrients, including vitamins and minerals, not getting enough protein in some cases. So nourishment is about food, but it's also about really enjoying the experience of life, which is essential. When I say sleep, again, I mean actual sleep. I mean deep, restorative long enough nights of sleep every night. I also mean rest, taking some downtime, restoration, so actively restoring the body after a time of intense pressure, you know, studying for midterm exams, trying to get a promotion, having a big presentation at work, training for a 5K, just having had a baby. You know, there are times in our lives where we really exert and then there are times in our lives where we need to recover. And unless we are, uh, you know, professional or Olympic level athletes, we often don't take seriously the idea of recovery. It is as important as having those periods in life where you're really exerting yourself. And again, I also mean pleasure, taking time to just have a picnic in the park or, sit calmly and, you know, watch your kids play or take a long walk in the woods with your dog. Pleasure is something that pretty much all of the women in my practice, especially of those with hormonal issues, are really deprived of because they're achieving so much. They're getting so much done. They're taking care of so many people. And I've absolutely been there. You know, there's always too much on the to-do list and not enough time to just sit with, you know, sit on the edge of the pool with your feet in it or, um, you know, sit by the fire and watch the snow fall. There's just not enough attention to the restorative and restful times. And honestly, the other challenge I see is that even when people think they are resting, they're watching TV or on their phones, and that is another form of an energy drain that does not restore hormone health. Finally, 
move. And it's not as simple as it sounds. You know, you've always heard eat less, exercise more. In many ways, in this program, I'm going to suggest that you exercise less, or at least the right kind of exercise, and you eat more of the right kinds of foods. It's, it's almost exactly the opposite. Because when it comes to hormonal imbalances, right size exercise is far more important than exercising more. You may find actually that if you give up your intense runs and boot camp classes and you begin exercising uh, in a way that's more like walking or water exercise or restorative yoga, that you may actually lose weight faster. And this is counterintuitive, but it's because of the effect of intense exercise on hormones. So let me give you an example. This is my patient, Anna. She was a 34, uh, sorry, she was a 43-year-old woman when she came to see me in practice. She was complaining of night sweats, PMS. She had a lot of headaches with her PMS, shortening cycles, fatigue, bloating, anxiety, and insomnia. She was going to sleep fine, but she was waking up at 4 a.m. to use the bathroom, and then she couldn't get back to sleep, and then she would worry about, was she going to get up on time? You know, was she going to get up before her alarm? Was she going to sleep through it? So she was half the time just, you know, not even hardly going back to bed after that 4 a.m. wake up. She was starting to have some weight loss resistance around her belly. She had gained about five inches of belly fat over the last two years, sort of slowly, and started slowly growing out of her clothes, and she was getting a little frustrated by that. And she was beginning to have hair loss and hair thinning. She reported sugar cravings and low tolerance to sugar or alcohol. She was like, you know, every time now, if I even just have two glasses of wine at dinner, I, get, I feel hungover the next day. She runs three to four days a week. She does pretty heavy strength training twice a week. Uh, she also would do yoga, but only really if she remembered or kind of felt like she had time. Sometimes she said that she felt more tired, especially after her running days. And she was trying to run a lot more lately because of that, you know, steadily gaining belly fat. She worked, uh, she still does work as a physical therapist four days a week. She has, she has two school age boys and her husband is quite supportive, but he's not, not around to help very much. So, you know, after she gets home from work and the kids get home from school, she's still in charge of making dinner and helping with homework and getting the place cleaned up and getting the kids, you know, settled down because her husband doesn't often get home until closer to 8 p.m. in the evening. And because she has those headaches all the time, especially around her period, she takes a lot of Tylenol. She has good social support, but she doesn't really have a lot of time to hang out with her friends. And she reports that her bloating after meals seems to be worsening. So we got some laboratory tests done for her. Um, she, her the only thyroid test we had was uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. It was up at 4.0, which was normal according to her doctor. But according to our functional lab interpretation, that's quite high, actually. Ferritin, which is one of the iron measures I like to look at, was 70, which is fine. Uh, her vitamin D was in the 40s, which is also not bad, but a little lower than optimal. So she's not either getting enough sunlight exposure or enough vitamin D supplementation. We also had two other tests done, urinary organic acids testing and Dutch hormone testing. On her urinary organic acids test, there were a few positive findings. One, we were seeing that she was wasting glutathione. And glutathione is an antioxidant. It helps detoxify the body and keep the body from being too inflamed. And when you take a lot of Tylenol, as she was for all of these headaches and joint aches, that can really deplete glutathione because the liver needs glutathione to metabolize and break down the thyroid. And so women who have glutathione issues often have more chronic aches and pains and just you know more inflammatory challenges in their bodies. She also had a number of high markers that were showing that her uh, digestive bacteria that we just talked about were out of balance. There were too many, quote unquote, bad bacteria in there. And that can happen really easily with stress, with having been on antibiotics a lot, um, over-exercising, lack of hydration, or just simply eating too much sugar because those bad bacteria love sugar. They also love processed grains like bread and pastas. And her cortisol, so that's a measure of stress hormone, 
And cortisol should be a little high in the morning. So you see there's that little bump up at AM2. Now she's above that bump up, so she's probably waking up already feeling anxious. Like the moment she gets up and puts her feet on the floor, she's like, oh my gosh, where do I have to be right now? What time is my first meeting? How quickly do I have to get my kids to school? Are they ready? Did they finish their homework? Is, you know, where are their shoes, right? Oh my gosh, do I have a meeting that I have to get dressed up for today? What am I going to wear? You know, that early morning, I have too many things to do. Oh, and then, you know, there's an alert on the phone that there's an accident on the freeway on the way to work and it's going to take longer, right? So that early morning stress is just boom. And you can see it right there on her stress hormone labs. Now, if it's in the range of normal and there's a little bump of cortisol, then you don't wake up anxious. You wake up just ready to go. You don't feel like you need coffee. Very often, I see women who wake up with low cortisol and they barely, they can't even get moving without coffee. And that's perfectly reasonable given if they don't have that little bump of hormone health, you know, it's hard to get going. You don't have the normal healthy hormone balance that you need to get up and get moving in the morning. Her, her cortisol stays high pretty much all day, so she's, she's more of an anxious profile, most likely, but also kind of tired all the time. She's like tired and anxious. We call that tired and wired. Luckily, her cortisol dips just into the normal range as she heads to sleep, so you know she is able to go to sleep, but she, as we talked about before, she was waking up in the middle of the night and then not always getting back to sleep and then waking up stressed. So she's falling asleep, getting a couple of decent hours of sleep, but it's not a full and, and restorative night's sleep. She also has high estrogen. She has high levels of the kinds of estrogen that when the estrogen is broken down can contribute more to female cancers because she's not, her liver again is lacking the resources to break down estrogen healthfully. She's also not methylating well, which is an, it's a term that is again involved in the liver's ability to break down some of these sex hormones. When the body is chronically inflamed, hormone balance is altered. And as I said, that contributes to a risk of increased cancer. So it's not always just about the hormones. What I want you to see here is it's about the environment in which the hormones are developing, doing their jobs, and then breaking down. So that's why we also need digestive health, immune health, stress calming strategies, and liver support strategies so they can so that the body can properly break down, metabolize, or detoxify the hormones. So we have lower risk of estrogenic and other cancers. Is the thyroid a factor? So again, we talked about if she has high stress, high cortisol, that is going to make it difficult for her thyroid to function normally because cortisol both blocks the function of, of thyroid in general, and it also blocks conversion of one kind of thyroid hormone into the more active kind of thyroid hormone that we need to keep our hair full, to keep our skin and nails healthy, to not be you know, always cold, to not have that belly fat build up around our abdomen. Vitamin D also impacts the health of the thyroid. And you know, her thyroid number was normal, but it wasn't optimal. So sometimes we have to push things into the optimal range. Vitamin A is also important in collaboration with vitamin D to help T3, which is that active thyroid hormone, to express DNA and do its job. What, will, well, what was her diet? Well, it was kind of a typical American diet, maybe on the healthier side of things, but not great. So it wasn't high in minerals. So she's lacking selenium and zinc, which are needed for that conversion from one type of kind of inactive thyroid hormone to the active thyroid hormone that keeps you feeling good. So what did we do? Well, we applied the three steps. Step one, nourish. She significantly shifted her nutrition from a diet 
that again was sort of healthy. I mean, she was eating sugar, you know, she was eating fruit, she was eating some vegetables, you know, she was eating um, low fat cuts of meat, right? But it wasn't enough quality. It was still high in fruit, high in sugar, had too many processed grains. And we shifted that to an anti-inflammatory, nutrient-rich, seasonal, easy and delicious. I had someone design a lot of recipes for this program, four different cookbooks, so they, they cross the seasons if you enjoy eating more seasonally and also depending on where in the world you live and what season it is now, right? Um, that are easy. Your kids will eat them. You can cook them in a few steps. It's not very complicated. And we added a lot of vegetables, more, mostly cooked at first because her digestion was so out of balance with all those uh, negative bacteria um, markers showing up. And we added a lot of water, half her body weight. So half her body weight in pounds in filtered water. I believe she weighed about 155 or 160 pounds. So that would be, you know, roughly... Uh, 70 to 80 ounces of filtered or mineral water per day. And we added digestive support supplements. Sleep and stress, step two, reduced her blue light uh, screen exposure using amber, amber glasses. And there's also some software you can use that we discuss in the program. And just getting off those screens earlier and more often. We addressed her lack of pleasure. She had a significant lack of pleasure. So I had her journal what was, you know, what what even made her happy. She hadn't sat down and even thought about that for years. And she realized that she loved to ride horses. So she literally took herself on a little excursion for the weekend. And she did this, you know, three or four times over the next six months and just had these planned horse riding excursions a few hours from her house, and it made a massive difference. Um, she needed some supplemental sleep, report, sleep support as well with uh, nutrient supplements and some shifts in her sleep routines. And there are lots of other stress drivers that I see commonly in my practice. Anemia. So she wasn't really struggling with anemia, but a lot of women are. Uh, dysglycemia, blood sugar imbalances. She was definitely dealing with this. So if, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning or three in the afternoon, you're like so hungry that you're kind of angry. We call this hangry, you know, irritable. You just walk around with food all the time. I used to work in a hospital and I used to wear a lab coat only so that I could carry like power bars and snacks in my coat because I knew I couldn't be away from my desk for, you know, four or five hours before lunch without eating something. That is a huge red flag that you have blood sugar imbalances and that will affect the brain. That initial, you know, kind of the, the, the um, location one, the uh, ground zero of all of your hormone systems, they all begin in the brain. And again, inflammation, which she was definitely dealing with because of her intense exercise, her imbalances in gut bacteria, how much sugar she was eating, and just the stress. The you know she had more. She hadn't had a big stressor like a big move or a divorce or you know a special needs child or something like that. But she had a day to day feeling like she was not getting enough done. Just a chronic stress of there was so much to do, and she didn't have enough time to do it. She wasn't being a good enough employee at work and she wasn't helping her patients enough and she wasn't, you know, being a good enough mom at home and she didn't have enough time for her husband or with her husband and she wasn't volunteering enough at school. It was just a low chronic thing that had been going on for almost a decade. A lot of emotional stress um, and other people will have uh, immune factors. So it, she didn't really have an autoimmune condition, although uh, we could have further explored that in the thyroid and but you know by addressing her cortisol her thyroid resolved um, so you know immune factors are can affect the brain ground zero of, of hormone responses and if someone is struggling with you know a chronic virus or has an autoimmune disease that can be a, a physical stressor and then oxidative stress, so you know, too much exposure, exposure to environmental toxins. Maybe there's a lot of 
you're eating a lot of foods that are covered in pesticides or there's a lot of air pollution where you live um, or you use cosmetics that have a lot of endocrine disrupting or other chemicals that can cause stress to the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. So with people who have chronic fatigue or nervous system issues, a lot of times that's related to that inflammation that then is affecting the person at the cellular level and not eating enough fruits and vegetables to balance that out. All right, so those are a lot of different stressors, a lot of different common sleep issues I see for step two. Now step three. Okay, so she was exercising a lot, which in one way is, is could be good, but in her case, in her particular case, because that cortisol was so high, it was too much. So how do we know what's enough? Well, this is the, the kind of marker I used with Anna and with all of my clients. Right after your workout, immediately after, ask yourself, how do you feel? Do I feel nourished or depleted? If it's depleted right away, maybe too much. In many cases, immediately after the workout, the boot camp, the run, there's kind of a, a workout high and you feel pretty good. But then two hours later, or when you just wake up the next morning, you feel crashed. Really, you know, and not just muscle sore, but really fatigued, depleted. It's a feeling of depletion. If that's the case, especially if we have hormone testing that shows us that your stress response system is out of balance, excessive working out can actually make things worse. So in her case, we had to step back and take about three to six months of really just practicing restorative movement. So it doesn't mean sit at your desk or sit on your couch all day, right? It doesn't mean get in bed. It means go to a restorative yoga class at least twice a week. It means walk outside in the neighborhood or walk in the forest, you know, almost every day. We want daily movement. Maybe she gets a standing desk. She had a pretty physical job, so she didn't need a standing desk. But other clients of mine, you know, they sit all day on the screen. They're never outside. You know, they're either sitting all day on a screen or they're in a car. You know, get out of the car when your kid's at soccer practice and take a walk. Don't sit in, in your car on the phone. Um, it makes a big difference to give our body movement in a way that's restorative rather than depleting. All right, so that's the move section. So just four weeks later, her night sweats and PMS headaches had almost completely gone. She reduced her Tylenol use to less than twice during that month, and it used to be several times a week. Her cycles lengthened, so that cycle lengthened from 23 to 26 days, which is much more normal. Her digestive function was restored. She was no longer bloating. Her fatigue and anxiety were 80% better. She lost seven pounds and three inches of belly fat, working out less. And she improved her hair thickness and her cold tolerance. So are you ready for hormone balance in your body? If you are, join us today for the Hormone Balance Program. You will receive three online modules delivered to your inbox. Nourish will help you determine your best nutrition, digestive support, and nutrient supplement plan. Sleep will help you find the root cause of your sleep challenges and your stress. Is it more emotional? Is it more physical? Do you need to get off the blue screens? Do we need to balance your blood sugar? What is the issue for you? will help you to get great sleep again and rediscover essential daily pleasure in your life. Move, get your best movement and fitness plan based on your current hormone challenges. Now, some people do need to exercise more intensely or more often, but in many cases of hormonal imbalance, we first have to start in with a practice of rejuvenating restorative exercise that can then be used in balance as we increase exercise intensity. And this program also includes the four seasonal, delicious, and easy cookbooks. These recipes are great, even if you have a family of picky eaters. 
We also include high quality supplement guides, a toxic exposures questionnaire, because if you've been exposed to a lot of environmental toxins, there are some things you can do which help hormone balance. Lab testing recommendations that you can bring to your personal healthcare team. Uh, we also have a clinic. It's an option if you need to find a personal health care team. We also included a guide to cosmetics and household cleaners that won't disrupt your hormones, relaxation guides and videos, and more. So this program is specifically designed for women in their late 30s, 40s, and 50s who are struggling with perimenopause and menopause symptoms, you know, hot flashes, weight gain, hair loss, insomnia, anxiety, or depression. Also, this works really well for women and teens who are chronically fatigued, especially if you're athletic. You've got achy joints, you get sick a lot, or you struggle with irregular cycles. Women who are struggling to recover after having a baby, if you still have weight to lose, if you're struggling with mild depression or anxiety, you have chronic fatigue or aches and pains. If you were me after Claire, after the birth of Claire, my first daughter, and just feel terrible and all of your doctors are saying, oh, you're postpartum, you know, you just had a baby, this is normal. This is not normal. There's a lot you can do about this and I'm here to help, I've been there. If you are any age, from puberty to menopause or beyond. In fact, I've tested this program in women in their 70s, and it worked great. Women who were tired of feeling tired, irritable, depressed, anxious, brain foggy, burned out, and you know, just having that weight gain that was so frustrating for them, this program works great too. Any age, menopause or beyond, perimenopause, trying to get recovered from having your first baby or your fourth baby, this program is great because all women essentially from puberty through the rest of our lives, we have to pay attention to our hormonal health because it's so involved in our general health. This program is very practical. I've tested it in hundreds of women at the Integrative Women's Health Institute with great results. It's a step-by-step -step guided approach, but it's not just a three-week beach body detox. It's not a three-week program. So I don't want you to think of it that way. It's three components that you integrate as a lifestyle shift. It's a fun, delicious, supportive lifestyle shift that you can use on your own with your friends and ideally in collaboration with your healthcare team to get to the real bottom of your struggles. You'll figure out exactly which testing you need, exactly which supplements you need. Because if your hormones are out of balance in different ways, there are different um, solutions for that. Thank you for joining me today. I invite you to join us in the Hormone Balance Program today. Complete details about the program are available on the page below. Have a wonderful day. See you soon. Bye.